how good is it to see those rocks from the Murray Basin, uh, like from under the Murray Basin? And uh, now that we know how the rocks look like, we can actually start thinking of how do we actually explore with them, uh, explore for them. And uh, that's what our next speaker will ho hopefully tell us about. Uh, Tom Weiss, our principal geologist, currently the acting program coordinator of the 4D geoscience team. Over the last decade, you heard many talks from, from Tom because he worked in our regional geological uh, geoscience projects across the Gola and especially also the Kumpana province, and most recently also uh, in the Dalamarian orogeny, uh, origin. Tom is also currently the leader of um, the National Drilling Initiative, uh, which, as we heard, is a project with the MINIC CRC. So, Tom, the stage is yours and show us how to explore there. It's a big setup. Thanks, Carmen. <laughs> so, just a brief note on the MINEX CRC and the, and the NDI in particular. So, the MINEX is broadly broken down into three pillars. So, drilling technology, which revolves around development and uh, pull, through of, pull through to commercialisation of the CT rig. Data from drilling, so that's improving what data we can collect whilst we're drilling, immediately after, and, and, and gain whilst we're drilling too. Uh, and the NDI, which is how can we harness the first, of those, the first two projects there and take that to better explore in Greenfields areas? So we've heard from Claire why we're in the Dalamarian. It's a pretty exciting place to be, uh, really where proper convergent margin tectonics kicks off in Australia uh, in yeah, around about 500 MA. So we went and we drilled 24 holes for just under 7 k's of drilling. Uh, four and a half of which was using the CT rig. Uh, the rest was using conventional technology, so mud rotary and diamond. Uh, and we used the first phase of our, our project in the Alawuna area that Claire mentioned as the sort of advanced field trials of the CT rig. I'll skim through quickly on what the rocks look like from Alawuna, as Claire's done a really great job of taking those lithologies that we've gained from drilling to the next level as we've got the geochemical results and isotopic results back from the lab. Uh, we're still waiting on a few things, namely shrimp geochron and uh, a few other bits and pieces, but as Claire said, Liz is uh, over there at the moment and, uh, and feeding us tantalising teasers of dates as we go, so that's exciting. Uh, and next, moving up to Kwandong Vale, a couple of hundred kilometres further north, uh, broadly a, a similar package of rocks, so we see a similar felsic and mafic volcanics, granitic intrusions, uh, Gebroke intrusions as well, uh, and uh, similar sort of deformed, probably debris flow, flow breaches, which are, which are quite exciting. So we've got a whole bunch of lithologies uh, straight off the rig. Where do we take that next? So we've got to start thinking in terms of mineral systems concepts uh, and, and how can we take what we've learned from drilling even before we get some of the exciting results from geocam, isotopes, geochron, uh, what can we do straight away? Okay, so really what we're looking for in terms of mineral systems, I'm preaching to the, to the converted here, but uh, we, we want fertile rocks. We want an architecture conducive to channeling melts and fluids and, uh, and mobilising some of these important systems. And we want some uh, tectonics to be able to do it with. So when people think of the Dalamarian, I've put up the next slide, if that'll come up. Uh, a heinously complicated time-space plot here, uh, developed for the Tasmanides. Don't, don't bother trying to read anything on there. Uh, I've highlighted where South Australia sits in the, in the dashed red box. And all the literature that's talked about for the Jalamarian is it all happened in the period 520 to 490. Okay, so that, but is that really the case? Was there no effect of any younger tectonics? that clearly dominates the Tasmanites to the east. Was there no effect of that in the Dalimurian at all? Well, that, that's what the literature currently says. So if we wanted to go out to the, to the Dalimurian and explore for something, well, what could we look for? Well, we only know that there's, whoops, we only know that there's activity in that period 520 to 490. So that sends us down a tunnel. It restricts our thinking. We're, we're narrowed into that particular time to look for those, those rock interactions that we, we want to be able to form a mineral system. And is that an appropriate thing to do? Well, hopefully that was the aim of our project to, 
to understand, is it an appropriate thing to do? Or if not, why not? What more can we say that's out there or might be out there? So I'll run through a series of, uh, of possibilities, I guess, using my next few slides and hopefully come to a, a conclusion that there's, there's more out there to look for. So I'll start with, with KMN2. I'm not gonna go into genetic arguments about how the KMN2 deposit formed, uh, but really what we can see is there's metamorphic rocks, there's, there's copper and gold mineralization, and wonderful, fantastic. It's an amazing photo in, uh, in the cut there uh, from, from Hillgrove. Uh, but how do we look then next at what we got from our, our NDR drilling results? Well, we look like we're in a completely different system. So that, again, straight away, we've, we've moved away from the unknown, moved away from the known. So we've seen we've got clastic sediments, we've got diamectic breaches, which are indicating of uh, active tectonics while sedimentation's happening. There's hydrothermal uh, evidence uh, for activity whilst there's, there's volcanism happening in there. There's sulphides both within volcanic uh, clasts. There's sulphide clasts themselves. There's sulphides overprinting every fracture plane on a lot of these rocks. So we can see there's, there's lots of activity. There's bimodal magnetism, as, as Claire's talked about, and acidic to rhyolitic rocks. There's mafic to intermediate intrusions. There's also carbonates knocking around. So completely different to Kemen too and unmetamorphosed. So we could start to put that in a sort of geodynamic model, geodynamic framework. Well, we can see we've got sedimentation, we've got tectonism, we've got magmatism. Looks like a, an actively developing rift environment, which is exactly supported by some of the data that Claire was running through there, which is, which is fantastic. So we then take that from our drill hole kind of scale uh, linking across drill holes, we can see on the right hand side the regional scale gravity map that the team produced and we can see that there's, there's big long wavelength gravity features. So in an actively developing rift or back arc environment, having mafic rocks in the mid crust, completely to be expected. So we can take drill hole scale to belt scale. So we can see we've got a, essentially a, a fairway for these sorts of rocks extending about 100 kilometres east-west and a few hundred kilometres north-south, which is fantastic. So what next? Well, this isn't advancing, there we go. Uh, we like to take these rocks and, and look for analogies of what we might like to explore for. And probably with these sorts of lithological associations and, and timing relationships, we're probably thinking more along the VMS lines. So there's a Grasmere system in Western New South Wales, which is more of a Beshi style deposit, uh, and a really nice illustration of, of how these sorts of systems vary based on the, the lithological associations. And we can see that probably we're, we're more siliciclastic and probably more felsic dominated. So we're kind of at the, the, uh, the right hand side on your, on your screen there, which isn't a bad place to be, right? So in terms of putting that in a, a, another context environment or another analogy, would be we're kind of at the right time, 510 to 500 or so MA, as, as some of these things are coming out from Stacey's work. And what's happening at that time elsewhere along the Delamarian system as a whole? Well, you've got the Dundas Trough develop, uh, evolving in Western Tasmania. You've got things like the, uh, the Mount Lyle deposit, Rosebury, and other big systems. So fantastic things to explore for. And we're in the right sort of environment at the right sort of time. I'm not saying they were uh, connected geometrically necessarily, that's a, a too hard basket for the time being, but fantastic things to look for. Next, so we've gone from that period 510 to 500 or so, stepping slightly younger, uh, we can see we've got structurally controlled porphyry systems uh, outcropping on the edge of the Murray Basin, so I highlighted some of Wei Hong's work on the Anabama Hill deposit, so a, a sub-economic and, and small porphyry system. But Way's proved with his, with his immense data collection that uh, these rocks are fertile. This system just didn't, get, didn't quite get big enough. We can also see from, from Way's geochron that uh, there was a post-tectonic granite or uh, granite intruding at 485 MA. So that's the Anabama Pluton as a whole. So about 40 k's long and uh, about 10 k's wide, uh, almost a batholith in size. Uh, and the actual mineralization, not at 485, Mineralization's down at 460. 
So we're seeing that structures have been active to facilitate magmatism at, at 485, and that similar structures have probably been reactivated down to 460, channeling copper and, and molybdenum mineralization. So that's a fantastic story of some of the, the younger post delamerian things uh, happening. So again, outside the window that's known for the, the 520 to 490 or so. And what can we see from, from some geophysics? So this is a survey that Kate Brand did before she departed us for, for the bomb. I'm not allowed to say that, sorry. Uh, so again, this is showing the Alabama Hill deposit, uh, which is kind of in the center of the, the cross section up there, uh, highlighted by the red star on the, on the MT model. So I'm showing a, a 3D uh, resistivity model there from Kate. And that shows really nicely a, a big conductivity anomaly in the in the upper mantle to lower crust, highlighted by that big red blob, C5. And it shows a really neat il illustration of how geochronology and geophysics can tell the same story. So we can see the Anabama granite itself uh, sits as a nice prominent resistor up, up here, sorry. Can't see, it's too far away. Uh, and we've got condu conductivity fingers wrapping around it. So that's neatly illustrating the same story of there was a granite intruded and then uh, some subsequent mineralization and, and, and later fluids wrapped around and were partitioned around that granite intrusion. So again, structures, uh, magmatism, and structural reactivation happening. We link back to some thermochronology. I've put Way's uh, really beautiful summary plot down on the left-hand side for, for some of these porphyry-type systems that show, whoops. Not doing well, am I? Uh, Delamerian origin -y bracketed up here at 520 to 490. Lots of the post-tectonic magnetism happening in this period here, so 490 to 480 or so. Mineralization popping in at 460-ish, give or take. Uh, potentially a, a slightly older mineralizing uh, event at the, at the Bendigo uh, prospect. And then a series of younger reactivation or, or, or possibly cooling ages. So completely outside that window of, of 520 to 490. And that's really nicely backed up by some of the argon work that, that Anthony Reed and co have been, have been doing. So down in the western Mount Lofty Ranges down by the coast, again, no, no real uh, site of the Delamarin itself, but a really intriguing peak of activity down between 470 to 460 or so. So that, that's showing that these, these structures are, are, are being shunted and what's happening at that time? Well, you've got everything happening in the Lachlan. So the Macquarie Arc kicking off, Porphyry Systems in the, in the Cadia District are kicking off at about 460. So it's a, a really exciting and, and fresh development to show that uh, the Delamarin in, in SA is, is, is doing things at this time, and uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool result. So with some of our drill holes, we, we went out and tested the the concept, sorry, of uh, some of these structures being able to tap into and, and facilitate uh, ma potentially magmatism, but definitely fluid flow uh, and alteration. And we tested these uh, at a, a pretty neat structural intersection uh, around our, our holes one and two in the Alawina area, which I've highlighted uh, in some of these, these rock photos. Uh, and what we wanted to do there was, was, was test that structural intersection and, and are we seeing an alteration system there? It looked like a, an alteration halo in some of the potential field data, and that's exactly what we got. So we got chlorite, sericite, epidote, carbonate, sulfide, mineralization, not the copper grades that we might have wished for, but you know, it, it's, it's not a bad result in terms of proving up a concept. And we'll step to a, a younger series of events entirely, uh, not recognized on the map for, for South Australia, this, this period of activity, 420 to 390, uh, is not something that was really known about before. So Claire and co published a really nice paper on the geometrically opposite corner of the Kernamona uh, about magmatism and basin development at, at 390, so read up on the Ula Hill formation. But also here on the, the south, the, the, well, I guess the, the southern portion of the Kernamona, uh, there's some exciting dates coming out of Western New South Wales and the Loch Lily Cars Belt of magmatism and potentially porphyry fertile magmatism happening uh, between 426 and 390. And 
that belt looks to continue into, into South Australia. And excitingly, Liz reckons we've probably got some young uh, magmatism at this time happening in some of our, our rocks that she's got on the shrimp at the moment. So fantastic result. So again, we've gone from drilling to linking into a, a bigger context. And in terms of mineral systems, well, what else is happening at that time? You've got the Cobar Basin, you've got the Mount, Mount Daubeny Formation uh, as well in, uh, in Western New South Wales all active and producing mineral systems in that, in that time bracket. So pretty cool, pretty exciting, and I guess the, the, the links there would be porphyry to epithermal systems, which there's, there's, there's building evidence for. So hopefully I've done a, an okay job at convincing that this time, spot is, time space plot is completely wrong and uh, a misrepresentation of exactly what's out there hidden under cover and that there are some exciting things to be, to be looked for and hopefully found. So I've, I've, I've summarised this in a pretty dodgy uh, PowerPoint graphic, but there we go, we do what we can. Uh, and showing hopefully how this, this or, or, origin evolved from a, an extended continental margin. We've got uh, developing rifts, potentially a couple of phases in there, possibly with the early uh, Chem Antir group and then potentially more partitioned extension that we might be seeing through the, through the central Murray Basin, including where we drilled down to the, the Sherlock Prospect out there. Uh, and then we've got the post-tectonic magnetism, which has been known about for a while, which goes from Alabama down through the Pathway Ridge. Uh, and then even younger still down 100 million years later from the time bracket that we initially knew about. So we can see there's, there's evidence building for uh, mineral potential and, and metal being introduced at at least four time periods that I've, I've highlighted there, uh, as well as potential for, I guess, tectonic and, and thermal upgrading of, of some systems, particularly as we build the evidence for, for younger activity. So I will round out there and we will be yeah, releasing uh, a huge amount of data in the next year to, to support this story, hopefully. So stay tuned. Uh, I'll highlight that we finished our, our, our field data collection on the, on the drilling uh, material yesterday. So stay tuned for that on the Drilling Atlas. It's 95% up there. It'll be 100% pretty soon. So thank you. <laughs>